I'm going to show you how we can take a multispectral drone mapping author mosaic, pop it into QGIS, and then create an NDVI layer for further analysis. So let's get started. When your data have finished processing in GeoNADIR, all you need to do is pop over to the table of contents and click on these three little dots to bring up the menu to allow you to download the data set. Once you click on that, you'll receive an email when the data set is available for you to download. So once we've got that downloaded, we can open QGIS either as a blank project or another project that you've already been working in. And then I like just to drag and drop my data into Q. Now don't panic here when your data looks like this. What this means is when we see something or all that's all black instead of what it should look like, there's a contrast enhancement issue. So to fix this, I'm just going to pop back to GeoNADIR and I'm going to use the inspect tool to get a bit of a feel for what the pixel values are across my scene. So I can click around a couple of different areas and I can see that those values are all very low. There's nothing more than 0.1. So back in QGIS, I'm going to right click on my data set and go to properties. Now you see the maximum value over here is really quite high and what I want to do is I'm going to change that to 0.1 or whatever value it is that you need to get within the range for your particular data set and I'm going to apply that. So now we see our image is starting to look a little bit better but the colours are a little funky and that's because of the band display that's been used by default. So what we want for a standard false colour composite is to use the near infrared to be displayed as red. We want the red to be displayed as green and we want the green to be displayed as blue. We're going to apply that and then we're happy with our standard false colour composite. So our next step is then to calculate the NDVI image. So to do this we're going to go up to processing and open the toolbox and if you start typing raster calculator into the search here you'll see it pop up in the listing. So double click on the raster calculator to bring up this little interface. Now what it's giving you here is a range of the different layers that you might be able to use for your algorithm and the different operators that you have as well. So you can type your algorithm or expression in here or you can use this predefined one which is NDVI which is what we wanted to use anyway. So I'm going to go to add and you'll see that it pops up asking me what band is it going, does it need to use to consider as the NDVI. And if we pop over here we can see that band 3 is NDVI. So I'm just going to put that in there and band one is red. So that works fine. I'm going to go OK. Now you see that expression pop up in here. So we've got the near infrared minus the red divided by the near infrared plus red. Now you can always put that in manually. So if that's not the algorithm that you want to use, instead you can make this manually. So I'll go through doing that as well. So I'm going to start with a set of brackets so that I don't miss them. And I'm gonna start with the numerator. So the numerator is near infrared. I just double click that there, minus the red. And then I'm just gonna use my keyboard to give the division sign or I can click it in up here, pop in another set of brackets. And then this time I'm gonna go near infrared plus red. So you see that that expression is exactly the same as what it was when I did the preset there as well. Now as we scroll down the next one is asking for a reference layer. Now it does say it's optional but that's not exactly true. I found that it gives me an error if I don't put that in. So we're going to click on the three dots over here and just make sure that that's referenced to the input that we want to do. And um, we can pop back here now and follow through with the rest of the options. Now if you would like to save this to a file you put this in the output here but I'm just happy for it to be to a, a temporary file for the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Now when that's completed, we'll see that pop up in the table of contents and we can close this little pop up over here. And we have this gray box, which of course is not particularly helpful, but never fear, this is also just a contrast enhancement issue. So we're going to fix that like we did before. So we right click on the layer, go into properties. And the first thing that I would like to do is instead of having this as a gray scale render, I would like to put it into multicolor. So that's called the single band pseudo color. And for me, this defaults to a color ramp that's viridus. This is a color ramp that I like. It's really good for anyone that has color vision impairment and it also has a really even coloring across the color scale so you don't have particular bands getting favored. Now the other thing that you need to know is that the NDVI always has a value of between minus one and plus one. So here's our contrast. Let's change this to minus one and change that to positive one and then we're going to apply and we see our NDVI image pop up here and that's all looking great.
Now often what you want to do is to understand it a little bit more is to dig in a bit deeper and so we're going to use this tool up here to inspect or identify individual features. So once you've clicked on this you'll see the little eye pop up next to your cursor and click on any individual pixel and you'll get the NDVI value at that location. So 0.5197 here in this case and you can click around and start to get a bit of a feel for the NDVI values and then take that through to your next step of analysis.